I hope I'm in the right group. Hi, everyone. Well, Hello. Oh, was that let's correct? Not, that, that let's, not, let's not jump the gun, guys. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everybody. And good evening. Tonight we have with us, I'm really confused here. Right, that doesn't take much, does it? Right, we're back on the screen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's live. We have a very special guest in Ethan. Now, I'm not going to say too much because I'm going to let Ethan do most of the talking because I'm pretty sure most people are probably sick of hearing from me and Lisa. So we're going to let Ethan do most of the talking, but we are going to chuck some questions at him. So just to give a bit of context, we, we've created a unit section in our, in our group for the, about really the raw truth about growing a coaching business. And as part of that, what we're doing is some interviews and some conversations with people that we're working with or people that we have worked with, people we might work with, but so far it's interviews with people that we are working with. And Ethan's story, again, I'm not going to spoil it, but Ethan's story and, and what he's experienced in growing his coaching practice has been just incredible to watch. And we have so loved getting to know you, Ethan. It's been absolutely incredible. Um, and we're both very, very fond of you. And we'd really love it if you could just kind of give the guys in this group some ideas, ideas in the wrong, what the right word really, some idea of what it is to grow a coaching practice and what you've experienced through doing so, so far, right? From where you were to kind of where you are now. So to kick that off, why don't we, and I know you kind of sent us a video with some, some really good stuff in which we're going to try and drag back out of you so you can share it with everybody. All right. Why don't you just kind of tell us a little bit about who Ethan is so the guys can get an idea. Yeah, so th thanks for having me here firstly, guys. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been such a cool journey working with you guys. So, so you know, when you offered this opportunity, I thought, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, would love to share what I've seen. And, uh, and in, in terms of my background, you know, I, I was a solopreneur for, for many years, like doing online marketing, lots of dodgy stuff, really, um, spamming the search engines and so on. And, um, and yeah, I was it just, I tried for many years to kind of make it online because I saw these people with their Lamborghinis and so forth. And I thought like, you know, if that's possible, surely I can do it. Um, and, uh, but in many ways it was, it was a way of running away from the world as well. Like, you know, I was like really insecure. And, and, and so uh, if I could make money without actually dealing with people, it sounded like a great deal, right? So, so I did that on and off for, like over 10 years, you know, with some success. Um, but every time I experienced some success, it seemed like it would, something would then happen and then I would, you know, lose it. Um, and then eventually about, I think five years ago, then I, I went, uh, went into the industry and I worked in tech because, you know, I, I studied computer engineering I studied finance as well, but I never worked in finance, but uh, I did, uh, I went back into tech and, uh, and I worked as a product manager, which if you're not familiar with that is just like basically working with a team of engineers, designers to decide what to build and how to create a product and, and, and improve it, and make a successful product. So I, I did that for some time, but then, you know, always with the intention of doing my own thing. But that was a helpful experience because I then took that experience and then came out and created my own training program for, uh, for people in tech. And it was some professional skills, but, but also with uh, the mindset piece integrated onto that because personally that, that's what I was passionate about, that, that whole personal development side, I guess you could say. You know, because that's uh, that was driven by my own personal pain. So, you know, I was continuously on that journey. I could never have enough self-help books 
pretty much. And, and I did get a lot of benefit from them. So when I went into the corporate world, I saw that, wow, you know, everybody's struggling with the same things. And, and there's definitely stuff that I can help them with things that I've seen that, are that can help with. <clears throat> so I, I did this professional training program, but I always saw it as an interim step because what I really wanted to do was just focus a hundred percent, not on the professional skills, but on uh, yeah, self growth, that mindset, I guess you could, you know, depending on the terminology, but, mm -hmm. but um, that's what I wanted to do, which was kind of help people to wake up in, in some of the ways that I had woken up, so to speak. Um, and then quite early on in that journey, say like within six months of transitioning, of starting to transition from that professional training to coaching, uh, I ran into you guys. So, you know, when the, when the student is ready, so, you know, so <laughs> you guys it appeared. Was, it was downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because yeah, I know that so... when we first met Ethan, we talked a lot around, I mean, something that we spoke about really at the beginning was kind of client creation and, you know, what you were doing up to then to create clients and stuff, which I know is very relevant to a, to a lot of people in here. So what in those early stages, what what is it before you met us? What is it that you were doing to create clients, to grow your coaching business? What kind of things did you try? Um. Uh, so I had my group professional training program and then I had a couple of people from that group because that group, that group involved um, group coaching calls and on the calls um, inevitably, you know, quite often it would lead towards these more like uh, questions about how are you operating? What are the, what are the, your own fears and so forth that are holding you back and not so much the, the professional stuff, you know? And so a couple of people said, you know, I asked them, would you be interested in kind of continuing this? And a couple of people said, yes. And at the time I wasn't charging much, but, uh, and, and I, um, yeah. So I started working with them on like short packages, like, you know, like five sessions, and so that's kind of how I got a couple of initial clients. And then I also had this funnel set up for my group, which, you know, an online marketing funnel with Facebook ads leading to a web page and then leading to a call with me. And so I just appended coaching onto that where I would get on the phone with somebody and then I would speak to them and then it, either the, group coaching might make, make sense or one-on-one -on -one coaching might make sense. And then I would just give them the option of one or the other. And so I got a, a couple of clients that way as well. Cool. Yeah. And did you find that that helped you to get your business to where you wanted it to get at that stage? Did you feel like it was giving you what you needed? I definitely felt too slow, uh, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, and I think I shared some of that with you guys when, when we spoke yeah. is that uh, I felt that I was, I was still too far away from where I, I wanted to be because I had a goal in mind of uh, making a sustainable income, like, you know, sustainable for my family and and that wasn't quite cutting it. And it seemed like it might be a long way away. Like, um, no, I wasn't speaking to enough people. I wasn't charging enough. And so the, the, the rate of signing new clients and, and, and so forth, it just didn't, um, yeah, it, it didn't stack up. And I know, I know that it's, it's something that takes time. And I knew that, but at the same time, I thought that, well, surely with my experience with online marketing and, and all that, I feel like 
I'm not starting from scratch, so I should be able to do this faster. And yeah, and I was looking for ways to, to speed that up. Yeah. I, I love that, man, because I know just to give everyone some context, we, we asked you just a couple of questions and you sent this video back. And there was something in there that which really stood out to me and Lisa around kind of the slowing down piece, like really knowing what that means and being able to slow down because it's, oh. it's easy, isn't it? I, I'd love to hear what you've got to say on this particularly because I, what I heard in your video was really insightful for me. And then it's, we kind of, when we think we need more, the, the, the kind of the urge is to speed up and do more, isn't it? It's like quick, yeah. more, 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 do more of what I'm doing. And, and actually what I heard in your, in your response was that actually by slowing down, you started to then sort of change the way you do did things. I know me and you and, and Lisa have talked about that and we've worked together on that, but I'd love for you to share that piece around really slowing it down and what you saw in that, that was, that's been so useful. Yeah. I think that I knew that as a concept that, uh, slowing down is important and you know it's, you read it everywhere um and i think one of the the first like big pieces of value i got from the two of you was uh a demonstration of that like you know when, when i reached out to you and we had our conversation and we had another conversation and there was uh, there was just uh there was just no rush in that. I could feel that you were really present. Um, and being on the receiving end of that was really impactful for me. Right. And, and then I think that helped to really move that from a concept to an embodied understanding of like, oh, okay. That's what that looks like. That's what that feels like. Um, so yeah, in in a sort of way that that once I saw that, then uh, I was able to see where I wasn't being present because if you know t t slowing down is almost uh, even just uh, is sort of just a concept because we we can only ever be here or not be here and and so what i saw is that i wasn't actually being there it's in in some instances i was thinking about the next client i was or in the middle of a conversation with a client i was thinking um how do i get them to sign up and 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 you know that's that's there's such a tangible difference between actually being present or being even five seconds ahead you know it's like thinking of my next response or you know uh what objection they might have and and so so i guess when i was able to be more present and then you know that that's where the that's where the power is because uh, I'm either with that person in front of me or I'm or I'm not, and then it doesn't matter if I'm speaking to ten people and I'm never with those. I'm not with those ten people. Like, what what's the point of then trying to scale that? So so I got to see that deeply, and then. Um, Yeah, naturally, then the, um, there was more impact in the coaching sessions or even in the you know, initial conversations. And people were interested in speaking to me again. Um, and then interested in having a, a discussion about how we might work together and then eventually signing up, which is... Uh, yeah, which is not to say that it's a, um, you know, like a smooth process or I do it perfectly or anything, <laughs> right? 
but it, it's amazing how how much of a difference it makes just when you when you kind of sh- just even shift that balance of being there versus not being there yeah i love it and and i there's been times hasn't there where i think this is a really important thing to to bring up it's like there's always another layer to mm. slowing down isn't there the conversations we've had it's like we get to a, one conversation and another and then another and then we have to, we, we've kind of brought you back and it's oh yeah, mm. yeah i'm doing it again because I'm, I'm exactly the same i think we all are to a large extent um, mm. yeah so how would you i'm very aware that i'm, I'm do, doing all the questions here so lisa interrupt me at any time what, what would you say to 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 other coaches, maybe if they're just starting out, like, so I'd be really curious to what advice you'd give yourself, right? So it's like, what advice would you give to new coaches that are starting out and looking to create their first clients? What, yeah, what would you say to them? Hmm. I guess I would, start off by kind of ask, finding out where they are, where they're at. Um, but there are, there are definitely kind of common, common themes that we see coming up. So, um, yeah, common themes in terms of what, what people struggle with and what I struggled with. So I think if I reflect back for myself, it would be yeah. I don't know. It's it's almost like an element of trust that if 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 you're able to to kind of trust yourself and, and slow down enough, like trust yourself to slow down, or slow down enough to trust yourself. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, And even do that for one conversation, right? You, you might just start to have a, uh, that embodied understanding of, huh, this is different, you know? Um, and, and it seems like the other person is getting something out of this. And I didn't feel that, I, I didn't have to like push myself and, and, and kind of analyze everything I was doing And, 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 and there's no kind of paradox there that, you know, sometimes when we, when we're first starting out, it seems like there's this paradox of, yeah, people are telling me to slow down, but I need to speed up because I'm, I'm at zero now. If I slow down, like, where, <laughs> where's that going to leave me? Yeah. Right. Um, but there's actually no paradox because, um, we're not talking about slowing down in terms of action, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, yeah, not so much a time-based thing, but, but um, kind of like being still and, and, and being present with what's in front of you. Because as a coach, then as a coach, well, not even as a coach, but that's where your power is. But definitely uh, as a coach, if you're uh, working with somebody else and you don't have that, that ability, then, you know, you're, you're, you're really, yeah, yeah, you're really hamstringing yourself. Me and Lisa have both shared one of the things, one of the many things that we love about you, Ethan, is that in a coaching conversation, it's very, you're very quick to just, right, and to just be with us, which is why it's such a pleasure, so easy to coach you in that respect. 
And I was listening to um, Steve Chandler talking earlier about almost exactly this. It reminded me, hmm. fortunately, it reminded me we're having this conversation tonight. <laughs> I said to Lisa, what time is it? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. But he was saying around something around like reinventing yourself, but hmm. not working from. So when someone comes to a conversation, they're talking about their past. It's like a hmm. disclaimer to be really brutal here. And the interviewer was like, okay. He said, when I'm really present with my clients, there's no past. We can just create a future. And that's it. It's like being here with me, with you. What can we create? What do you want to create? And it, it just reminds me so much of what you're saying, that just that being present and the dissolution of that story. And working from here it's cool man i love that you see that and share that Ethan, i want to ask you a little bit about mm. if i can because i know when we started talking it was definitely a focus around money like i want to mm. be this much by this date and this much a month etc and it yeah. feels like you pretty quickly actually moved from money on my mind as the priority to um, something else, right? So that presence and that slowing down, that listening, that service. So I'm just curious as to what you saw for yourself that had mm. you shift. I think a lot of coaches do get stuck on, but I do want to make money and miss the message around, this isn't about not making money. This is about... <laughs> money but through service first and yeah I just wonder if you can talk a little bit about your experience of that yeah um yeah that that definitely was a lot of money on my mind that was um time pressure related to that money that i needed to get there and i needed to get there like last year <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, because I mentioned that I had been through that kind of roller coaster of yeah oh you know I'm making the money oh I've lost it oh I'm making the money so it's so it felt like this pressure had built up over time to now uh, I was still carrying that pressure with me of like when is this going to happen like it's it's, it's still not happening still not happening um, so, but I had, I had already experienced like, you know, even in my in a group program and in some of the coaching that I had done, I had the experience of coaching somebody and, and, and there being a real shift for them. And then seeing that, well, that's, you know, that's what creates the value and that's that's what leads to somebody wanting to to work with you right um so i had seen some of that but maybe maybe i didn't trust it fully yet or i didn't uh, hmm. i didn't see it that clearly i think um and maybe it is there is a it's not really a time-based thing but maybe it's sort of something that Yeah, you sort of you 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 see deeper and deeper, um, and and yeah, with your your example, like coaching with the two of you, was an example of that where I saw that it was so obvious that the, the money was a just a side effect. It's just something that comes up as a as a result of what's happening, what's happening there between us. So, because I, I I shared with you that I had no intention of 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 coaching with the the two of you, you know. Um, you offered a conversation. I was like, oh great, yeah, that you know, I'd love to hear that, like, get some advice and so forth. But I'm definitely not ready for coaching now. And and then that changed, obviously. Um, and the reason that changed is because it was it was about the impact and it was about 
wow, yeah, this is, this is really helpful and this is going to continue to be helpful. And then that led to me realizing that, yeah, that, that'd be worth investing in. And that, that would be the exact same journey for, my, for a prospect or for my client to work with me. So what would a, like what, what good is a focus on the, on the money? Like it's helpful just in a practical way of, okay, I want this kind of lifestyle. Maybe I can work with this many clients. And, you know, so just in terms of structuring your practice, I think that, you know, that's helpful. But the moment it becomes some kind of, carrot or some kind of stick the carrot that I'm racing towards or some, some some kind of stick to beat myself up with then it's it's actually taking away from the very thing that would create create the money what what do you see now if you if, if we've got new coaches watching or coaches experienced coaches but they're not creating clients what do you see now that that very thing is like, can you summarize for them? What is it something you do? Is it something you are? Like, what, what advice would you give them? What's that thing? I know if I was watching, I'd be like, what's the thing? <laughs> <laughs> the very thing. What's the very thing? <laughs> yeah, so in, in my case, there was a shift in me, right? There was a... Uh, um, there was a tangible difference in me of, of I felt something different. I, and I, I felt the level of presence and the level of service that, that uh, the two of you demonstrated. And I could so clearly see that, that this would help me. And, and then I'm, then it was just like, yeah, weighing it up. Okay. That versus the investment finding a way to make that investment. But I, I knew what I had experienced and I, I knew that I, I wanted it and I could, I could, um, I knew the impact and it wasn't from some kind of leaflet or, or you know, your marketing page or something. It was, it was something I had experienced. So, so it's the, yeah, I guess it's the actual experience that, that counts and, and something shifting for the, for the client, so having having your mind on 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 money or anything else really, apart from being there with your client, is going to take away from that experience. Is that um? Yeah, did I did I answer that? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we can ask ask the group and exams just places in there. If we've got questions, then please do. Mm. There. But what I'm really hearing from you, Ethan, is the thing is, you you saw for yourself the difference that it makes, right? Like something shifted in you, and it was when you could really feel not just up. Mm. I know this makes sense to give the client an experience, but when you felt yes. that for yourself, it's like something shifted, and you were drawn to, okay, what if I was to try coming mm. from that place myself? What impact would happen? for my yeah. life. So yes. it was kind of embodying a different way of being, right? Different mindset, a willingness to try. Mm. What if I didn't put money first? What if it was a service first? What if I just got really present and listened? What happens then? A willingness to go there and, and, and put your trust in that. Yeah. Mm. And I think, you know, one thing that I've, um, I'm realizing as well is that even though I had coached people in the group program, like I said, and, and they had they had been impacted, I had never experienced that myself. You know, which is a which was a different thing. And so there was an element, still an element of yeah, I don't know, distrust or, or something like how impactful is this really? You know, uh so I didn't allow myself to fully, you know, believe that. I guess that 
-hmm. or maybe to rephrase that it's more that I was kind of believing still that there was believing some of the doubts so I think that's why it's so important to 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 be coached I think that um, that allows you to to really to experience what that's like like impactful coaching is like had that very conversation with a coach today around strengthening your enrollment conversation. Hmm. Coming back to see the difference you're making, right? Have respect for the value you are bringing as a hmm. coach. Because when you really can stand firm in that belief, Right? When you really, truly know the difference it makes, it will strengthen the enrollment conversation a hundred times over. Mm. It gives you, it changes your language, it, it changes the tone, you know, it's like it just gives you such power in a good way to, to step into those conversations and really serve somebody. They yeah. can really have them hear something that and somebody else might be too afraid to say, right? Because they're like, oh, mm. it's all kind of skirting around the edges. You really own the impact that you make. And you do that through looking. You do that through slowing down. You do that through seeing. Mm. And then your enrollment conversations can't be anything but stronger because of it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm conscious of your time. We haven't got any questions from anyone yet, but if there is anyone watching like on replay, we'd love you to share your questions as well and we, we can loop back around. Um, but maybe just like a final, a final couple of questions. I'm thinking about the people who, are, who would be watching, but I guess they might want to hear, well, are you making money now? Are you creating clients? Like what's different for you now? Yeah. Um... So I think when we started together, I'm not 100% sure. I, I could definitely improve my record keeping. But uh, it's, I think, you know, I'd signed up clients at about like $1,000 or 1,000 pounds. And we were working together four or five sessions over two months. And, and... Uh, so we started working together in May, I think, right? Um, and now, like, so, so I've, since then, like, for example, July, uh, I signed up four clients and, you know, now the, they're mainly six month packages and, you know, they're ranging in about uh, like four to five K, um, dollars or pounds. Yeah, it really depends you know, how we structure it. So, so yeah, obviously things like have, uh, have shifted dramatically. So, um, and that's, that's kind of without the focus on the money, right? Uh, that's, it's, it's, so the money's, the money's, yeah, like it's, it's a side effect. Um, So, yeah, I guess it's, 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 it continues to get easier in terms of trusting, trusting what I'm doing and, um, and knowing that uh, that's all I have to do is really to really show up and, and, and be with the person in front of me or do the next thing, reach out to that person mm -hmm. and make a difference and continue to to hone my, my craft in terms of like, uh, yeah, where, where are the areas where I'm, I could see, I could be seeing things more clearly where are the areas where I'm still kind of struggling. Um, sometimes in the enrollment, I can still see that there's a little bit of uh, yeah, something that takes me out of present sometimes. And, and so it's a continuous thing of, of looking at that, looking at that again and again. 
and and then let, yeah, letting the money take care of itself. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's one of the things that I absolutely love about you so much is just that growth mindset that you have, just a real willingness to to listen and to learn and to the questions that you come to with to us with are, are all service based questions. You know, it's like a real curiosity on how could I help this person or how could I deepen my impact for them? Not how mm. can I get them as a client? How can I get them to review? It's all this really just curious, heart, heartfelt service that I see in you. And it's just awesome. It's just so cool to see that. So I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's important because... Uh, I think, yeah, probably most coaches would get into this profession because they love to do that, right? And, 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 then, and then other things seem to get in the way, like uh, <laughs> making money. And, and, but um, yeah, there's, there's no need to actually diverge from that. It's like, no, do what you came to do. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's almost like there's a deeper level of service always to be found. Hmm. So, you know, I, just from when I first started, I had an idea of what service is. It looks completely different now these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and you guys helped me to see that as well because I had all these questions of how is this going to work? Like if I, if I give if I have these conversations and then, you know, three conversations and people don't sign up and then, you know, how is that even going to work? Like, how can I build a business based on that? <laughs> uh, which are, which are all, I think, is, yeah, they're, they're all fair questions, but they're based on, they're based on something that the, I mean, there is there's no way for our minds to look at our past and, and kind of predict what's going to happen, which is kind of what we're trying to do there. It's like, I've had these conversations, they haven't paid off. If I carry that forward, how is that going to play out, right? But, but if I had those conversations, like we were saying, and I was up in my head and I was, I didn't actually make a difference then that's going to be different if I change, if I change the way I show up. Yeah, cool, it's so cool. It's great to hear that Ethan, exactly be present and make a difference. Yeah. yeah. Ethan, I'm really conscious of your time. I know you've got places that you need to be as well. So um, Sam, have you got any final questions, any final thoughts? I don't what well, I did actually a minute ago, but you covered it funny enough. And I went on mute because <laughs> my son started shouting and I started joking on my green tea. So forgive me for being quiet. <clears throat> I was having a complete nightmare in silence over here. But no, I, I don't actually, Ethan. I think I think you you kind you kind of covered it. And I I don't know, man. There's just I just really want to acknowledge you, like the way that you the way that you are, who you are, and how you coach and what I've really seen in you is that, like Lisa said, it's just that willingness to just show up with complete and open mind and always willing to see something new, you know, even when that ego resists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've got it nailed this time. I've got it nailed. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> inevitably it happens, right? And it's just that, man. And yeah. Yeah. You're, I think everybody watching this will probably agree, but you're definitely one to watch. 100%. for sure thanks so much guys yeah it's, a, it's continuing like you said sam to kind of see it at a deeper deeper levels like first oh i'm not showing up in that way and then I, okay we, we realize that and then i see oh the judgment of me not showing up in that way and then it's like be okay with that and then there's like a third level you know um so uh yeah but it's 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 a like beautiful 
journey and it, it, it's all okay. And there's always more to see, which is, which means it's never boring. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always, it's always so cool. Like, uh, you know, the, the work we get to do. And, and I really thank the two of you for, uh, for everything. <laughs> Welcome. So if anybody's watching this after it's been recorded live, then please do still post your questions because we'll, we'll, we'll loop back in and make sure Ethan gets them. Um, and it's, you know, it's well worth if you're in that space at the moment, creating clients, it's well worth asking, getting some clarity on that. So I'm going to mute myself because my son's at my door and I don't think he knows I'm having a conversation. He's like, say goodbye. <laughs> so I'm just going to mute myself. So that's the last from me. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lisa.